exponential. For exponential functions, the base doesn't matter that much and when it comes to the shape, uh, the shape, the shape of the graph, except when the base, that's the two right here, when the base is between zero and one. If it's between zero and one, you have to flip the shape. Okay, so uh, this shape right here, x to the, uh, or two to the x power, looks like this, okay? Uh, if, if you were to, if it was um, one over two raised to the x power, which it's not, but I'm just telling you, if it was, then the shape would flip like this, okay? Because instead of the number becoming bigger and bigger and bigger as you go along the x-axis, uh, the number becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? Uh, if uh, you want further um, uh, in inspection, <laughs> if you want further um, information on this, make a table of values for this. Start with negative two and then go up to um, positive two and you'll see and understand why the shape does that okay now now we got that out of the way uh most of the time the shape is going to be like this as long as the number is greater than um, a fraction <clears throat> now a base in an exponential function the rule is it always has to be positive okay now that, we, that doesn't stop us from having like a negative number multiplying to it after the exponent happens but uh it's there okay so for um our discussion uh, I have specific numbers for each of the, the, the numbers that can transform this function. And boom, there they are. Okay, so um, to start us off, I'm just going to use do each of these. So like this one has the H, this one has the K, this one has the A, and this one has the, the, the B. Okay, and then we have some combinations of those. The last three would be our hardest ones. Okay. Um, oh, one more thing about the exponential function is this value right here. This, this point, 0, 1, is there for any exponential function. It doesn't matter what the base is. It's always there. Okay, let's start out with um, the k. Uh, the k right here uh, moves the function um, up vertically or vertically, I guess it is up. Okay, so what you would do is you would take your asymptote and you move it up to five, okay? Because remember, it was at zero. And then you're gonna also take that point and move it up um, five spaces, so that would be zero, six. So this right here would be our graph of G. Okay, this is our G graph. All right, and where the K happens. Now, let's look at the one with the H. When the H happens, that moves the function left or right, okay? You gotta think the opposite. Now, the k moves the function up or down. When it's positive, you go up. When it's negative, you down. Uh, the h, you gotta think the opposite of whatever it says. And so it says plus three. So you normally would think, oh, plus three means move to the right three, but that's not, that's not correct. Plus three moves to the left, okay? So what we would do is, let's see. Now the asymptote didn't change. It didn't move up or down, uh, but the, the horizontal, um, aspect did change so we we were at zero one and we're gonna go back three one two three okay so i'm gonna put my new point right there zero comma i'm sorry negative three comma one okay so the x changed and then we have our graph okay uh the next one uh the the a okay when it's negative two okay that is going to stretch or shrink the function vertically Okay, the A does a vertical scale. Okay, I'll call it a verti scale. Uh, the scaling happens, and what it looks like is it looks like the function is being stretched or it's being shrunk. Okay, so let's do that guy over here. All right, uh, so this is a negative two. Okay, now I'm gonna do uh, two graphs, okay? We're gonna say uh, what happens when it's just a two and what happens with the negative, okay? Uh, so when it's just a two, it's going to take that point that is zero, one. And since it's a vertical uh, scale, we're going to scale uh, the y value. Okay, so uh, the y value times positive two would make this into a two. And so uh, we would move it up to here. We're now at zero, two. And then we do our graph. Now, oops, I kind of ran out of space here, uh, but my window, you know, my graphing window is not that big. But what, what it looks like is happening is the graph is being stretched up and downward, okay? Um, of course, though, there is still an asymptote right here. 
and this line will never cross it. But it looks like it's being stretched vertically. Uh, if the number, if the letter A was between zero and one, then uh, it would look like it is being shrunk and it would go in this direction instead, okay? All right, but what about the negative? What, what, what happens when there's a negative? When there's a negative, the Y values flip, okay? Uh, so because it's a vertical scaling, if we're negative, the Y values flip. And so I'm going to uh, instead put it down here at zero, comma, negative two. Asymptote stays the same, it didn't change. And this is what our graph looks like. So the Y values flip. Okay, that's something else we should say. Um, we should say Y value stretch or vertical stretch. Let's see, Y value uh, scale. That's a stretch, shrink, or flip. All right, so I guess I should put a box around that. That's like really important right there. Okay, all right, now let's look at the H. The H right here also does a scaling. Okay, so for the H, ooh, we're running out of space here. Let's go ahead and use a different color. Um, not the H, <laughs> the B. All right, so B is X value scaling. And it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna stretch, it's gonna shrink, or flip. But remember, X values, they are horizontal. Oh, hurry. Okay, so um, going back to our parent right here, how would this uh, this negative three change my x values? Now with the a, we had a number two, which is uh, greater than one. Uh, here we have a number three, which is also greater than one. I told you guys that if this was not a two, if it was a fraction, like if it was between zero and one, ignoring the negative, uh, then we would be doing a shrink, okay? But because we were greater than one, we did a stretch. Uh, for the B, you have to think the inverse happens or the opposite, okay? So because we're greater than one, we're not gonna have a stretch, we're gonna have a shrink, okay? It does the opposite of what the A does. Kind of confusing. That's why we don't like the, the B very much because he has to be different. Kind of like the H, the H has to be different. Okay, so first of all, um, the X values. The X values here for all of this, now I'm not gonna point out specific X values, but the X values, they're going to shrink. Okay, that means they're gonna go inwards like this. Um, so uh, instead of the graph maybe looking like so, it's going to look like so. I mean, the, the shrink is gonna be harder to see, horizontally with the exponential function, uh, but all the X values should move inwards a little bit, okay? Um, so, uh, but this is also kind of weird. This point right here doesn't change. Uh, the points on the, the, the Y axis when you're doing a horizontal uh, scale doesn't change, okay? So um, that would be what happens with the three. Now, if you want to find out exactly how much uh, we're scaled here, then you're going to have to pick some points and plug them in. The asymptote doesn't change. And when you pick points and plug them in, make sure you pick the easy ones. Uh, now, I ignored the negative, but now let's take the negative into account. The negative will take the X values and flip them. So that means all the X values that are negative are going to become positive, and all the x values that are positive are going to become negative. And so now our graph is gonna look like this. Okay, and the asymptote doesn't change. Okay, so uh, that's those first four, okay, doing each of these transformations one at a time. Now let's do a combination of them.